Hey everybody, I'm Jeff. I want to show you how you can run your .NET 6 APIs in Google Cloud Run and have it automatically build using Google Cloud Build every time you push it to GitHub. Let's get started. So I'm here in the Google Cloud console and the first thing we need to do is make sure that the Cloud Run and the Cloud Build APIs are enabled. The easiest way to do that is go to the navigation menu and just go to each one. If the API is not enabled, it will probably ask you. But here you can see I don't have any services created. So if I create a service, you see down here it says enabling. So this one does it for you automatically. So that's good. Now let's go to cloud build. And here it says, it's showing us that the API is not enabled. So let's go ahead and enable this one. There's a few things you need in order to run a project in cloud build that will be deployed to cloud run. And the first thing that it needs is a Docker file that will create a Docker container. So all services in Cloud Run run as Docker containers. So I'm gonna to go to my project, and this is just a really simple, brand new .NET API. This is .NET 6. I've created a Docker file here and a Cloud Build YAML file. And we'll get to the Cloud Build here in a second, but we're gonna start with the Docker file. So I'm not gonna to get too deep in the weeds about Docker, but what this is doing is we're using the .NET 6 SDK. We're using that Docker image and we're copying our project file and our solution file into the container, and then we're running a .NET restore. After that, we're gonna copy in all the rest of the files, and then we're gonna do a .NET publish, and we're gonna use the release configuration. We're gonna to output to a folder called build, and we're gonna tell it to not restore because we just did that in the step before this. And the last step is to actually run our code. So we're gonna use the .NET ASP.NET six image and this is an optimized runtime image from microsoft for running dotnet core or dotnet six applications so we're copying all of the files from our build was up here we're setting the asp.net core urls environment variable to run on port 8080 we're exposing port 8080 and then we're just going to tell dotnet to run the dll for our project so this is a super basic docker file and this is really all you need in order to run a simple application like this one. I'm gonna go ahead and test this locally. I've opened up git bash and I've cd'd into the directory where my project lives. And I'm going to run docker build with the tag cloud demo and period. And the period means run the docker file that's in the current working directory. So if I run this, you can see it's done. And I'm going to run it using docker run name of run demo I'm going to use port 5001 my machine i'm going to forward that to port 8080 in the container run it in detached mode and the image i'm running is called cloud demo now if i go to my browser and i go to port 5001 it should get a swagger page and there it is so that means it's running locally and it works in docker the other thing we need to do to get this to work in cloud build is to fill out the cloud build YAML file. I'm gonna open up cloud build and you can see here, I already have it filled out. So where you see name, it means run this image. And in this case, I'm using Docker and I'm going to run the command build. I'm going to give it this tag name. So whenever you see a dollar sign in a cloud build YAML file, that means that it is substitution variable where it's a variable that can be substituted into the current command. And so cloud build actually fills out a few of these for you when you create the initial cloud build. And I'll go over those when we actually do that. But these are just a few of them that it fills in. So the host name, project ID, and the service name, as well as the commit SHA, which is the commit hash from Git. And it's going to run the build against the Docker file in the current working directory. So basically the exact same thing that we did just a little bit ago to test this. And then it's going to run Docker and it's going to push that image and this is gonna push it into your container registry in your cloud environment. And then the last step is it's gonna use the cloud SDK and it's going to deploy this image to Cloud Run. This is similar if you were to run this in the Google Cloud SDK CLI tool, and it would be similar to running Cloud Run Deploy. This is a service name of where it's gonna to go to in Cloud Run. This is the image that we just built. So you'll see this matches up to this tag name up here. It's going to deploy it to the region that you tell it to and on the platform that you tell it to. So I'll go over all of those replacement variables 
once we get into the Google Cloud Console. So now that we have this all set up, we should be able to go into the Google Cloud Console, set up Cloud Run, set up Cloud Build, and we should be able to build this and deploy it to our Cloud Run instance. Let's do that. So now I'm in the Google Cloud Console and I am in the project that I want to add this Cloud Run service to. So go to your navigation menu and go to Cloud Run. From here, you can say Create Service, either from here if you don't have any or from up here if you already have a few of them created. And we want to continuously deploy new revisions from a source repository. And then we're gonna click Set Up with Cloud Build. And over here, I have my code in GitHub, but I'm going to select Cloud Run Demo, and I'll put a link to this repository down in the description in case anybody wants to clone this and take a look at it. Click I understand, click next, choose what branch you want to use. I'm just going to go ahead and leave mine as main and then choose Docker file as the build type. So we're going to actually change this later, but for now, just leave it here and click save. Then you can give it whatever service name you, you want. It actually does fill this in based off of your repository name. So I'm going to leave mine as cloud run demo. Choose the region which is closest to you. Mine is US Central 1. And here are all of the different options that you can change or select to modify how Cloud Run runs your container. I'm gonna leave mine as all of the defaults. I'm gonna say allow unauthenticated invocations. If you want to, you can come down here and open up this section and it has even more options for you to change. Again, I'm gonna leave all these as default, but this is where you can change you know, your memory, your CPU, timeouts, all that stuff variables and secrets, connection, security, all that. But I'm just gonna leave all of mine's default for now and click create. Now, this is actually going to fail the first time and this is to be expected. Since we set it up to point to a Docker file for the build, it's gonna fail because it, we're not actually building from the Docker file, we're building from the cloud build YAML file. So go ahead and click up here and say edit continuous deployment. And there's a few things in here we need to change. One, I give it a cleaner name. You can change the region if you want to. I leave mine as global. You can change the description or any tags if you'd like. But the main thing that we need to change is the location or the build configuration. This is the cloud build YAML file. So if you click that, it's gonna ask you the location of where to find the file in your repository. And mine's in the root directory. And so I'm just gonna leave it as cloud build.yaml. And this is where you can add any substitution variables you want. So at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that there's different variables that you can substitute into your cloud build YAML file. And this is where you can add your own. Anything that you add has to start with an underscore. You can see here that it added in several default values. And these are all values that are specific to this build configuration for this specific service. So you can see that Mine's running the US Central One. The name of the service is Cloud Run Demo. And then all of these are just IDs or labels that you can change or point to if you want. And so if I go back into Visual Studio, these are the different substitution variables that correspond to those values in the cloud build configuration that we were looking at. So here's the host name, service name, and those correspond to these variables right here. So if you want to add any more, feel free. But for now, for this demo, I'm gonna leave this as it is. Then I'm going to come down here and click Save. Now I do wanna point out one more thing. So I'm gonna go back into this. So we set ours up to be triggered by a push to a branch event. And what this means is that when you push this to GitHub, GitHub is gonna tell Google Cloud that there was a new commit that was pushed up to the repository. And this, it's gonna automatically pick off this build. And that's determined by this here. So I'm telling it to only build on a push to the main branch. So you can have this set up to be multiple branches or a specific branch. I'm gonna leave mine as main. And then I'm gonna go back into Visual Studio. And if you go to Get Changes, I am going to commit all of my changes and we're gonna watch this build kick off automatically. This is initial commit. I'm going to commit all of the files. And then I'm going to push. So I just pushed that up to GitHub. Now if I go into the Google Cloud Console, I go into history, this will show you the build history for all of your build triggers. And you can see that this one is building. So let's wait a minute for this to complete. And through the magic of editing, this is now complete. So now what we can do is go back into Cloud Run and we should be able to see that revision is now completed. Now I can click on the service, I can go to revisions. You can see new deployment just now. So to actually go to this, click on the URL up here and don't panic, go to Swagger. There you go, it's working.
just to double check, I'm going to go to my about controller, try it out, execute, and we get a 200. Great, it's working. There you go. You now have a .NET 6 API running in Cloud Run. Now there's a ton of things that you can do to modify this or change this to better suit your situation, but what we did here is a great starting point. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. I will be doing more development videos like this in the future. Thanks for watching. See you later.